Hi everybody, welcome to Stamping with Melva. I'm here today to show you how to make, uh, it's called a folded tea bag, um, fancy fold. Uh, and I was flipping through Pinterest one day and came across a whole bunch of these. Um, I'm not sure how I got there and um, I'm not sure what I was looking for, but I came across a bunch that were done as flowers. Uh, and I thought, gee, wouldn't this be a great idea to make as a snowflake? And I am in a blog that went live today with Festive Fridays. So it's a Festive Fridays challenge uh, where we challenge you to use some um, of the um, items from the inspiration list. So we choose, challenge you to use at least three items from the inspiration list. This week's um, theme was winter or winter solstice. So... I on my card I've used um, blue and purple and snowflakes and a fancy fold. So four of four of the things that are from the the inspiration list for this week's uh, challenge. So I challenge you to part play along with us in the festive Fridays challenge and let me show you the card I made using this folded tea bag fold. Let me just switch over to my desktop and we'll get started. Okay, so this is the card kind of looks like a snowflake, I think. Um, the card I'm going to show you, I've cut the, the pieces a little bit smaller. These were done in, you need nine, um, three, nine squares of, of designer series paper. These were three inch squares. So the card I'm going to show you is actually done with two and a half inch squares. Uh, you could probably do it with smaller, but the designer series paper that I'm using from Stampin' Up, this is the, the Snowflake Splendor. Um, designer series paper and it's quite thick so if you had one of them that are not quite as thick um, maybe vellum even vellum cardstock wouldn't be quite as thick it would look really cool um, but this is done with a three inch square for these so let me show you what I'm going to be using today so I use the the sentiment uh, and on the inside of the card I use the snowflake this is from the snowflake wishes uh, stamp set then I have as I said, I'm using this really pretty designer series paper that is in a lot of different colors. There is um, Misty Moonlight, um, Pool Party, Balmy Blue, Highland Heather, um, lots of colors. So I've kind of mixed them up a little bit. I've got some of them folded so that I, you don't have to watch me doing the folds, but I've saved three that I will show you how to fold. So these are two and a half inch square pieces of designer series paper. And then I'm using Misty Moonlight as my card base. This is cut four and a quarter by 11. All of the measurements for this will be in the blog post itself. So I will put that um, as a link underneath this video um, and you'll be able to go back to it. Then this is Highland Heather. So this piece is cut uh, four inches by five and a quarter. And then I've got a piece of Whisper White that I have embossed using the Snowflake embossing folder. Uh, this piece is cut three and three quarters by five. So I've already embossed it. And then I have a piece for the inside that is cut uh, four inches by five and a quarter. Okay, we'll put this aside for the moment. So let me show you how I actually folded these. Once you've figured it out, it's not all that hard to do. Um, let me just see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So what you wanna do, depending on which side you want um, to the outside, I'm gonna have the ones with the purple. So you wanna fold this square in half. You need a bone folder, so make sure you have a good bone folder. So you're gonna fold this in half. You could score all of these if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna use my bone folder and give them a really good crease. So you're gonna fold it in half, open it up and fold it in half the other way. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but getting a good crease on it is really important. Okay, so you're going to open it up and now you're going to fold it on the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the diagonal in half. Again, use your bone folder to give it a good crease. Open it up and fold it again on the other diagonal. So now you're going to have all of these folds. Okay, so you folded it, you folded it in half on on the square sides and then folded it in half on the diagonals. Okay, now what you want to do is now you've got all of these, these folds, you want to take it, open it up, and these middle pieces, you're kind of going to push it together. So push these middle pieces inwards and then up so that this, gosh, do this so it goes up. 
inwards and up like that. It will almost easily fold together. And you end up with a triangle with these middle pieces inwards. So let me show you that again. We'll fold this again, fold it in half. on the square straight sides and then open it up and fold it in half on the diagonals. Open it up and fold it in half on the other diagonal. Okay. So now you've got this holding it so it's kind of the straight edges to the top. Push these side pieces inwards and fold up and it gives you this triangle. Again, use your bone folder to give it a really nice crease. All right, and then one more. Just so you, this is why I pre-folded some because there are nine of these pieces that go to make up your shapes. So as I said, when I was looking on Pinterest, I have no idea what I was looking for when I happened to come across the ones that were made as flowers. So it would be look really cool as a flower. So. There I fold, and now open it up, fold on the diagonals. Open it up, fold on the diagonal. All right, so then straight side at the top, pinch in on the sides on this fold, and then fold upwards to create this triangle. All right, so the next step is you want to take this piece, so this, this little triangle that's got a flap, so that you have two of these flaps. You're going to take this and fold upwards so that the points meet. Give that a good crease with your bone folder, and then the same on this side. So that pointy flap, you want to point it up towards the, the top of the, the triangle, and you will end up with a piece that looks like this. So you've got these two flaps, and now, so that's a, these are shorter. These inside pieces are smaller because you folded that point up. So again, this flap, so this long point comes up and meets the point at the top. Use your bone folder. And then on the other side, oops, on the other side, that side, the same. Take this flap, fold it up to meet, meet that point, top point. You can take your bone folder when you're done and just give this whole thing a nice crease. And then one more, take the flap, take the point and move. Push it towards there, or fold it towards the top. And then you can fold that back, take the point, fold it towards the top. All right. So now I've got all of my pieces. So you have nine of these. So these are the ones I pre-folded. And some of them probably need a bit of a crease. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. I did find this one to be a little confusing. There are all sorts of different different tutorials of, to fold this. So um, this was the one I landed on because it seemed to allow me to make something that looked a little bit more like a snowflake. All right, so then you want the point to be at the bottom. Move this closer. So as you put these together, you want it to be this point, which is the, the full thickness of the card. These are the... the double thickness and then this is four layers. So you want this point to be facing down. You're gonna bring another piece in, always this point facing down and you're gonna just tuck this right up against this fold and, and then this flap will go over top and that flap will go over top. So it does get quite thick. I use glue dots. I'm just gonna grab my take your pick tool and grab a glue dot. So make sure you have your glue dots on hand because you will use a lot for this. Okay, so 
I'm going to put a glue dot on this piece here because this is the first one that I'm going to glue down. So take your take this piece, tuck it right up against the fold, and then press your glue dot down. And then you're going to take another glue dot and fold it back along. If you do this as you go, it's a lot easier than trying to do it um, at the end. Trust me, <laughs> I tried that. It doesn't work um, as well. It Things start to flip out, um, pull away, and, and it just became harder and harder. So again, this, all the full thickness point goes to the bottom towards you. Push this into the fold and then the glue dot and then a glue dot on here. Okay, so you can kind of see, hopefully you can kind of see, let's use a purple one. And another glue dot here. So glue dot on here. Oops. And I just found that using these glue dots um, allowed me to um, hold it all together so that I wasn't struggling to hold it in place and glue or hold it in place and, and uh, kind of move around the, the snowflake. Again, this piece. So you keep going around your, around the circle. You could probably do this with smaller. Um, it probably will become, it, definitely if you have a, a cardstock that is a little thinner than, than um, most of the Stampin' Up! cardstock um, are, are thick, lovely thick paper. Uh, there are some that are thinner, which would work really well. Um, or I'm really thinking the vellum cardstock would work for this as well you wanted to try. That would make a very pretty card. Oops, I lost my glue dot on my finger. There we go. All right, so let's use this. Again, the full thickness point to the inside. Push it up against the fold and then a glue dot to hold it in place and then this fold this fold goes over top of it two more to go all right you can see why you need your glue dots handy because if you do this as you go it makes it a whole lot easier otherwise you're just it just got really messy for me when I tried to kind of hold it in place and figure out where I wanted all of the pieces to go so if you have if you're using all of the same um, designer series paper and there are no gradients to it, then um, you probably don't have to worry about this too much. But because mine has all sorts of different colors to it, um, I was kind of trying to figure out how I wanted it to lay out. So think about that in advance of, of trying to put this together. It just will make it a whole lot easier. All right, last piece. Now, this one becomes a little more complicated. When you get to this last piece, it's going to tuck two ways. So you you have to um, tuck it inside. So it's going to go up against the fold on your left hand side and up against the fold on this right hand side. That So you're going to need a glue dot over there as well to hold. This is your last. Oops. Come off of here. Oh. This is going to hide underneath. Glue dots are sticking to my fingers today. Okay, so there, that one goes in like that. So that holds your, your snowflake together. And then your final two glue dots will push those pieces in place, hold those pieces in place. Now I used, uh, I put my sentiment over top of the center so that um, it hides this hole, but it's really not as big of a hole as what you might think it might be if you're pushing it in tight um, as you go. So where's my where's my card? So if I bring my card pieces in, I'll lay this out. So this is 
this is how you go because I think it looks like a snowflake I don't know about you but and then I've got a sentiment here that I'm going to cut down and, and stamp so let's start putting the card together so we will all right have you figured out how to use the stamp and seal there is a technique and if you forget the technique so what you want to do sometimes I pull off without thinking about it so you want to if you don't have there we go so you want to run it along and then roll your your wrist and pull it off and that will keep this the adhesive right up against the the end of the the dispenser uh, if you forget like I did when I last used it and you just kind of pull off uh, you will find that so if you just kind of pull off now without doing this roll um, you will find that the, the uh, adhesive is not at the end of, of the roll and you will have to use your finger just to kind of find it and bring it, bring it to the end. But if you use that rolling technique, I find it works really well. I love the, the new stamp and seal. Okay, so that's my, um, my card base. So then this, you can just lay where you want it. You could use dimensionals, but I'm actually going to just take, I'm going to put my adhesive on my card base. It's just easier than trying to put it on this thickness. Um, I just, it, it may be a little thick if you start using dimensionals, but it really is up to you. I'll get this in the middle. Isn't that pretty with the, the misty moonlight? So then you can just adhere that down. Now I've got the sentiment. This is the sentiment. This is coming from the snowflake wishes. And my sentiment says, our friendship, there it is here. Our friendship is one of a kind, like a snowflake. Now, what you want to remember on these, the images on this um, stamp set, for the most part, Stampin' Up! always, their images are 100%, but they sometimes, because there are 17 stamps in this, they actually, um, make them smaller on the front. So sometimes it fools you, but it actually does tell you on the on the front of the card case or the stamp case that this images are at 70%. So when you pull it out, sometimes I go to reach for a, a stamp and I think, oh, that's the perfect size. And if I'm not watching, it will, um, it will be uh, bigger than I expect. So, but Stampin' Up! will always tell you what um what it's at if it, if it says if it doesn't say anything then it's at a hundred percent so i'm using my banners pick a punch to get a banner end so this is just a piece of of uh highland heather and i cut this piece one inch by let's see one inch by three and a half this might be a little long uh yeah it is so i'm going to just trim this um, and then I'm going to cut it again it's because I... let's try that again see if I can do it straight there we go and I think I will just uh, trim this a little bit so depending on what length your stamp is you can just uh, trim your trim your piece there we go that's a little better for the, the size I think I had this um, for the size of my snowflake for the other card um, I needed a little bit longer because the snowflake of course was bigger just to pull that out a little bit there we go okay so now I'm just going to take um, some adhesive and I'm just going to put it on the, the part a little bit. Well, I think it's probably good. So that's going to be on the card like that. So the, and you can use, uh, you can use a dimensional, which I have here to pop up the other end. Make sure you've got enough adhesive on here. There we go. There, and then you can use a dimensional to uh, pop it up on the bottom if you want. I think I want two dimensionals. Let's 
depending on your thickness, you might need a second dimensional to um, pop this up so that it doesn't sink right to the, there we go, that's probably better. Okay, that's that. And then the last thing I have, well, second last thing, I have this really pretty Snowflake Splendor ribbon that has the iridescent um, kind of holographic. It's not quite as soft as a lot of the Stampin' Up um, ribbon, but it really makes lovely bows that are nice and stiff and hold their shape. So I'm just gonna make a little bow here. Can fuss with the size as I get the bow made. There. Okay, there. And my ribbon scissors, and we'll just trim this. And I'm just going to use a glue dot. Put that right there in the center. And then the last thing I brought are these, the blue adhesive backed uh, um, gems. And I'm just going to put some of these on the snowflakes that are on my, the embossed images. And I think one on here. There we go. Okay, so that's the the front of the card. So I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock. And I'm not going to put a sentiment on here, but I'm going to put some snowflakes on the purple snowflakes. So I'm just going to stamp a couple of snowflakes on the inside of the card. Um, this is going to go to a friend of mine, and uh, it's, I'm going to put a note inside, so I want to leave lots of room for, uh, for writing my note. And then this goes on the inside of the card, like that. There. Isn't that oh, I just love the purple and the, the Highland Heather together. All right, so that shows you. So this, this is quite a large snowflake. So that was cut with three inch squares. And this was cut with two and a half inch squares. And these are still pretty manageable. Um, you could try it being a little bit smaller if you wanted to um, and uh, see how that goes. But um, two and a half definitely was manageable and definitely fits on the front of the card. Three, three inches will fit on the front of the card as well. It goes a little bit, uh, a little uh, outside of the edge of the card. Um, and is thicker just because of the, the amount of uh, paper that you've got. All right, let me just switch back. There we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I found it a really fun card to make. I love making fancy folds, so I'm always looking for something that's different and new. And for me, um, this uh, tea bag fold was different and new. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will take part in the Festive Friday Challenge. Um, we do it every other Friday, and there is a new theme for each of the, the challenges. So again, this this week's uh, was um, winter, winter solstice. So we pick some, at least three items from the inspiration list and make your card and then share it. And then we pick um, our top favorites from the design team. We pick our top favorites and um, you uh, you can grab the, the top favorites pick um, uh, label for your blog. So we'd love to have you participate. I hope you enjoyed the card. I uh, would love to see what you do with it. If you have questions, please let me know. Either post a question to my YouTube video or to my blog, which I will put the link to um, underneath the, the video. And while you're here, I'd love for you to subscribe and uh, then you'd get notified of, of my upcoming videos. So thanks very much everybody. Glad you could join. Bye.